Thank you for joining me today. We're going to call these segments Time with Trey, and they're going to be about 10 minutes long on a daily basis, and we're just going to get into God's Word. This is for those who want to go deeper in their relationship with God. We're going to learn how to apply the Word, how to become doers of the Word. We're going to position ourselves to learn God's heart, learn God's mind, and grow. Be the best us we can be. So get your pen, paper, let somebody know. Let's keep growing. Keep going. I want to welcome you to Time with Trey, and I'm going to be in a lot of different environments, a lot of different backgrounds, but this is to help you and I go deeper in our relationship with God. You know, the Lord's been talking to me about the power of prayer, and these aren't going to be real long, but they're going to go deep into God's Word to help us know His heart, know His mind, know His will, know why He does what He does, and we're going to start with praying to the Father in the name of Jesus. So let's go to John 16, verse 23 and 24. And this is Jesus teaching you and I how to pray. And he says, In that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Now when he is talking about in that day, he was talking about the day when after he went to the cross and after he was buried and after he was raised again on the third day and he's at the right hand of the Father interceding for you and I because of his act of intercession. It allows you and I to be in the presence of God and to approach God confidently and boldly. And he says it's important that we ask the Father in the name of Jesus. You know, prayer is communing with God. Prayer is when we're talking to God and God is talking back to us and, and we want to get our prayers answered. We don't want to kind of just pray a lot of off-the-wall prayers, but we want to pray according to the Word of God. And Jesus knew how to pray and he wants you and I to get results. So he's instructing us to pray. And he says now he wants us to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Now what, what that means is that just how Jesus got his prayers answered, when we come in Jesus' name, it is as if Jesus himself was asking the Father, but he wants you and I to come as a representative, as an ambassador, that we're in him and he is in us, and because of Jesus, we belong in the presence of God, and he wants us to go directly to the Father and ask him in his name name. I want to read it again. In that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, He will give you. The Father wants to answer our prayers. The Father wants to show up in our life, but we come in the name of Jesus, not on our good works, not on what we've done, not on our church attendance, not on uh, anything but Jesus. He says, come in my name, and the Father will give it. Verse 24, until now you have asked nothing in my name, because they were walking and talking with Jesus. He says, but after I'm gone, you need to ask the Father in my name. And he says, ask, and you will receive that your joy is full. So think about, is he Father? The word Father means source. It means Abba. You know, when Jesus showed up, they were used to knowing God as God, and a lot of times, Sometimes people know God as the God of this world, uh, the God of the earth, the, the creator of heaven and earth, but Jesus introduced him as Father. Remember when the disciples came to Jesus and they were asking Jesus, will you teach us how to pray? Matthew chapter 6, I just want to read it to you. Verses 9 and 10, he says, In this manner, therefore pray... So he's expecting you and I to pray, to have a prayer life. Now at this time, the disciples, they'd seen the power of God in a lot of different ways. And they didn't ask Jesus, can you show us how to walk in that power necessarily, how to pray like that, or how to get things done like that. They realized that the power came from prayer. They realized, so they go to Jesus. They said, can you teach us to pray? He says... Uh, whenever you pray in this manner, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He wants you and I, when we pray, to realize who we're praying to. 
that He is our Father. He's not just God to us. He is Father. He is Creator of heaven and earth. He is our source of wisdom and strength and courage and knowledge. He is everything to us. Jesus was saying, realize who you're praying to. We're praying to the Father in the name of Jesus. Once again, not because of all of our good works or anything else besides our relationship with Jesus. When we accepted Jesus, we became in right standing with God the Father. He says, now approach Him on my standing. Approach Him because of my righteousness that you now have. Ask the Father in Jesus' name. The Apostle Paul, when he is writing to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, he says, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Notice, he said, whenever you pray, he said, I'm praying to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, he's Jesus' Father, and he is our Father also because of Jesus. So pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. And then in verse 24 of John 16, he says, And until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be made full. You know, when we know that God hears our prayers, and we know that we have an answer to prayer, it causes us to be full of joy. It's, it brings joy when you know that the situation is going to change because God's super is going to come upon your natural. It brings you joy. John 15, verse 11, Jesus is talking. He says, These things I've spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Jesus wants us to be joyful because we get our prayers answered. Joyful, Nehemiah 8, 10, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. When we know that things are going to change, when we know that God will do what His Word promised, then there's joy. Romans 15, verse 13. In the New King James Version, it says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to read it again. Now may the God of hope. Hope doesn't mean wish. It means a confident expectation. The God of hope fills you and I with joy and peace when we're believing. An indicator that I believe God's Word is that I'm going to be full of joy and I'm going to be full of peace. Now think about that. Just like a, the gauge on your car or truck tells you if you're out of fuel or you're not out of fuel, your oil pressure is high or if it's low, your batteries are charged or not charged. Well, joy is an indicator that you're believing. Peace is an indicator that you're believing. So think about it. He says, I want you to ask the Father in my name so that you'll walk in joy. When there's joy, there's strength. An indicator that I'm believing is there's joy and peace. And Jesus says, I want you to know that my super is going to come on your natural. I want you to know that I will do what I promised you in my word. I want you to look at your gauge of joy and look at your gauge of peace. And if you don't have any joy and you don't have any peace, then it's an indicator that I'm not believing. So how do I get to that place of confidence? How, does, how do I know what to ask the Father in the name of Jesus? Well, John 15, verses 7 and 8, it says, If I abide in the Word, and the Word abides in me, I will ask what I will, and it will be done unto me by my Father who is in heaven. He said, This is how the Father is glorified, that we bear much fruit. See, when we're bearing fruit, there's joy. When we're abiding in His Word, there's joy. When we're seeing results, there's joy. And where there's joy, there's strength. And if there's strength, then we can resist the devil, and he has to flee, James chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. But if there's no joy, then we don't have any strength to resist the devil. And if we don't resist him, he doesn't have to flee. So I want you to sit back for a moment and ask, how am I praying? 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. I want you to listen to this. He says, Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, how do we discover His will? By being in His Word. His Word 
reveals His will. How do we know what to ask? God's heart is revealed in His Word. His Word is His mind. His Word is our covenant right. His Word is His bond. God is not a man that He could lie. And he says, this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, according to His Word, we know that He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, then we know we have the petitions that we've asked of Him. God wants us confident in the way that we pray. So how do we pray? To the Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask and we receive that our joy is full. How do we know what to ask? If we abide in His Word, and His Word abides in us, then we will ask what we will, and it shall be done unto us. 1 John 5, 14 and 15, this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, we know that He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, then we know we have the petitions that we've asked of Him. Think about the words confidence, the words knowing. Do you have that confidence or are you in a state where you're uncertain? Are you in a state where you're kind of doubting? Are you in a state where you're kind of perplexed? Are you in a state where you're worrying about whatever you're praying about? All that is is just an indicator. Okay, I haven't labored to enter into that rest. I haven't uh, heard the word enough on whatever topic it is. Maybe it's healing in your body. Maybe it's finances. Maybe it's wisdom. Maybe it's for your family protection. Whatever it is, listen to the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, the reason I'm giving you so much scripture during this time is that's the purpose of time with Trey. We're going to know God's heart. We're going to know God's mind. We're going to learn God's word. And today, He wants us to be confident to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. And when we ask the Father in the name of Jesus, we ask according to His word. Go to your phone. Go to uh, Google, whatever it is, and search the Scripture for whatever thing you're going through. And you ask the Father in the name of Jesus, and you ask and you receive and your joy will be full. It brings joy when you know all your needs are met according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. It brings joy when you know that you're healed by the stripes of Jesus. It brings joy that no weapon formed against you will prosper. It brings joy when you know that you're an overcomer and more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. It not only brings joy, but it brings confidence. Where there's joy, there's peace. Where there's joy, there's confidence. Where His Word is, that's God's will, and I want to encourage you, stand your ground on the Word of God and refuse to allow worry to enter in concerning whatever situation you're facing. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, listen to what he says in the Amplified. He says, casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on Him, for He cares for you affectionately, and He cares about you watchfully. I want to read it again. Casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all worries, all concerns, once and all on Him, for He cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. If I'm at a place of believing, if I'm at a place that I'm asking according to the Word of God and I believe that I receive it, the word receive means to take. If I believe that I take it, and there's joy, there's peace, there's not going to be worry. He says, if there is worry, cast it on the Lord. If there is anxiety, cast it on the Lord. If there is worry, he says, release it to the Lord. Because if you have the worry, if we have the concern, if we have the anxiety, then God doesn't have it. And if He doesn't have it, then He can't work in our life. If we still have it, then God can't show up. God wants to help you and I to pray with confidence. He wants to help you and I walk in the will of God. He wants you and I to know His heart, to know His mind. He wants us to stay in the game, to make progress. So today, I want to encourage you, cast your care upon the Lord. Find the promise of God, the will of God in His Word. Pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Abide in that Word. Let that Word abide in you. Let your joy rise. Let your peace rise. Let your confidence rise to the point that it just pushes out worry, concern, anxiety, because God cares for you. This is Trey Johnson. Time with Trey. Let people know. Let's get into God's Word. Let's keep growing. Let's keep going. We'll talk to you soon. 
I know these segments aren't very long, but it gives us an opportunity to grow in our relationship with God. I hope you got something out of today. Let somebody know that we're gonna be here again tomorrow, the next day. We're just gonna keep digging into the things of God. We're gonna position ourselves to experience all that God has for us. So I look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless you guys.